a law is by another law. Amen? Let's consider the law of gravity and the law of buoyancy. The law of gravity operates anywhere at any time, only in an environment where there is high density. But in an environment where there is low density, like in the case of hydrogen, then the Earth's gravitational force cannot hold it down. So when you fill a balloon with hydrogen, the density is very low, therefore the balloon rises without any effort, right? <coughs> this is the law of buoyancy. Thus, the law of buoyancy has overcome the law of gravity. We can see here that one Law power overcomes another law power. In the same way, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has overcome and has set us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Like we said, the law of aerodynamics has set us free from the law of gravity when you ride airplanes. Big question. Now listen to this. A law like the law of gravity, is always working, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Did you hear what I said? <clears throat> A law like the law of gravity is always working. Therefore, listen to this now. Do you have to pray for gravity to function? No. Prayer is not necessary in the case regarding a law. If you fill a balloon with hydrogen, do you have to pray, Lord, please make this balloon rise? No. Why? Because it's a law. When the principles of a law <clears throat> are adhered to, the law will go into effect and function as it's supposed to. Simple as that. But when the principles of a law are not adhered to, then you can pray all you want, but nothing is going to happen. For example, you can pray all day for a balloon that's not filled with hydrogen to rise, but do you think it's going to rise? No. But once a law is in operation. Prayer is not needed for that law to function. All right? Therefore now, in the case of the law of the Spirit, do we have to pray for it to function? Are you sure? Yes. Oh, you are smart. And I don't think it's because I taught you right, it's the Holy Spirit taught you. In the case of the law of the Spirit, you don't even have to pray. Why? It's because it's a law. It's a constant. Once it's in operation, it's going to continue to function. However, we must have faith and believe that the law of the Spirit is functioning in order for us to receive the benefits of that law. So believing is really important. It's important for us to understand that whether we believe or not, though, that the law of the Spirit is continuously functioning. But our ignorance is also working, that is working for us, hinders us from receiving the blessing that comes from it. So, therefore, let's believe that the law of the Spirit is working right now in us, defeating the law of sin, sickness, and death. Amen? Amen? Amen. You see, the law, Christ is inside of us, and He brought with Him the law of the Spirit. The law of the Spirit is a law 
is always functioning, it's working right now. But for us, like I said, to be recipients of the blessings of that law, we must believe that it's working. Amen? Do you believe? Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, you don't have to pray for it to work because, like I said, it's a law. You see, that's, why, that's what grace is. It's working. Hallelujah. You don't have to sh strive to, to pump it up to make it work. It's a law. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's a constant. It's continuously working. That's the nature of the law. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin, sickness, poverty, and death. The law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of anger, of the law of violence, of the law of gossiping, of the law of criticizing. Amen? Of the law of nagging. Amen, women? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Getting ready for the new year. A new you for the new year. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> All you have to do is just believe that it's already working in you and you'll receive the benefits and blessings of it. This is the way to victory. Back to Romans 8.1. We can turn back there. Romans 8.1. Romans 8 and verse 1. It says here, there is now no condemnation. The word condemnation has two usages in the Greek. Condemnation. Condemnation. Has two usages. First usage is in the civil sense. No, no, no. It's in the, the legal sense. Legal or judicial sense. It's kind of like courtroom terminology. So, condemnation here is like, yeah, guilt, Charges, <coughs> sentencing, <coughs> blame, <coughs> and shame. So when it says, there is now, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, what it is saying is there is now, therefore, no guilt, charges, sentencing blame or shame to those who are in Christ Jesus. So this is in the sense, using the word in the legal sense or the judicial sense. The second usage of the word is in the civil sense, or say more in the practical sense. And it means, condemnation here means Handicap. Crippled. Or disabled. So, in the civil sense, no condemnation means there is therefore now no handicap no crippling and no disability to those who are in Christ Jesus, Amen. who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Amen. Now, in other words, prior, prior to us understanding that the spirit is a law inside of us through Christ Jesus, 
we were trying to fight and battle against the law of sin, law of power, with our own willpower. But when we were trying to battle law power, the law of sin power, with human willpower, we were disabled. We were handicapped. We were crippled against the law of sin. We got defeated every single time. For a while we thought we were able to overcome, but eventually we failed. So we said, oh God, I'm so sorry. We went back to prayer again. We went back to reading our Bibles. We went back to confessing the word of the Lord, getting ourselves spiritually really pumped up, doing our spiritual uh, push-ups and says, okay, now I'm not gonna gossip. I'm not gonna get mad with my husband. And the thing just unwind. You say, God, I'm sorry. I'm going to read my Bible again. Maybe this time I should fast once a week. Build up those flex, flex your muscles. But what happens? We were crippled. We were handicapped. We were, dis, we were disabled Christians. However, the Bible says... There is therefore now no handicap. There is no crippling. There is no disability to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, not after the law of sin, but after the spirit, after the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you're not handicapped. You don't have to be on disability anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I've come to the very end of my message. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> All you have to do is to believe. Now, how do we believe? It's by receiving grace. It's always by grace through faith. Unless we receive grace, even if we try to believe, it will be us believing using our own efforts. That's why we've got to always ask God, thank you for grace. I receive grace. If it's by grace, believing becomes effortless. Hallelujah. You don't have to really try. He says, oh, I just believe. And even if, like, you don't see the symptoms change right away, then you know what? It's going to change. Amen. The law of the Spirit is working. It works all the time, every time, everywhere, Amen. without any effort. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, let's ask God for grace. Amen. Every day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's all stand in the presence of the Lord this morning. And everyone said a grace failed? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we just thank you. Lord, that we can end this year, 2010, in another grace message, recognizing that we are not handicapped. Hallelujah. We are more than able, through the law of the Spirit that's in Christ Jesus, to overcome the law of sin. Help us not to try to do it in our own strength, in our own selves, but always to just turn to Jesus and thank Jesus and say thank you that you brought in with you the Holy Spirit as the law of the Spirit of life. We just thank you. That law is always constantly working within us, overcoming the law of sin. Any situation that we face, any law of addiction, the law of the Spirit is more powerful. Hallelujah. And we thank you because Jesus has risen from the dead, has overcome all principalities, powers, dominion, and might. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said a grace filled. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor once again and tell them, you're not handicapped. Hallelujah. The Lord, we bless you today.